Hello and welcome to the Soho and Enterprise Networks tutorial. We're going to cover these two networking concepts because they're important and you should know them. <laughs> Simply stated, first they come up on the job all the time. You'll hear them referenced by colleagues or clients. You're also going to encounter them in a lot of the certifications. So the CCNA and CCENT reference them quite a bit. Finally, you're going to see them referenced in a lot of online documentation you're reading about a very various subjects. So they're good to know. Now, the good news is they're pretty easy concepts. So once you've got them, you've got them. And there's more good news. You've probably already had exposure to one or both of these networks just by virtue of trying to get online. So you're going to be a little bit familiar with these as we talk about it. First, we'll start with the Soho network small office, home office, and then we'll move on to the enterprise network. So let's take a look here. This diagram is pretty simple. On the top we have a Soho network and on the bottom we have an enterprise network. So let's start with the Soho. The biggest characteristic you should know about, the most important characteristic, the most defining characteristic of a Soho network is that it's a small network. It's a small network. Generally, 1 to 10 users are found on the Soho network. It's a rule of thumb. It could be a little bit outside that range. The primary purpose of the Soho network is to enable Internet access, which means access to remote resources and also means access to local resources. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, this network is very simple. We have a simple cable modem, but this could be something else. It could be a DSL modem as well or another high-speed offering. This network could have a hub hanging off of here. Don't worry if you don't know what a hub is yet. We'll get to it in another tutorial. There could be other PCs on here, perhaps a file server, perhaps a printer. So local resources can be found on the network as well. But generally speaking, they're not too complex and they're not too big. That is a Soho network. Pretty straightforward. Before we move on, I want to make a quick mention. If you're new to networking, you're going to see a lot of diagrams with clouds. Here I'm just circling the internet cloud. Clouds are just used in diagrams to represent a large number of nodes, devices, which the details of which are not necessarily important for the conversation at hand. So they're just represented. Trust me, it's a lot easier to use a cloud to represent the internet than to draw everything. That's nearly impossible. Okay, so let's move on to the enterprise network. The bottom of the diagram is our enterprise network. And the most important characteristic of the enterprise network is to know that it's a large network. In comparison to the Soho network, it is much, much bigger. That means it has many more users and many more resources. Also, it means it probably has a larger or more powerful or faster internet connection because you have a lot more users transmitting data you need bigger pipes, if you will, to get that, that data in and out of the network. So those are the chief characteristics of the enterprise network. The purpose of the enterprise network is very similar to the Soho network, and that is to enable communication between employees and also grant them access, enable them access to resources. Again, it could be remote resources online somewhere in the cloud, somewhere perhaps at a remote office or perhaps locally like a web server that we have here in this diagram. Just like the Soho network, this diagram is simple. It could be represented, it could be drawn in many different ways. We have a cloud here which is just going to represent the local area network or LAN. We cover the details of LANs in other tutorials so don't worry about that too much. But generally, the LAN is going to have a lot more components in it. Routers, switches, firewalls, perhaps other resources, all represented by the cloud here. Your typical user is just going to notice they have a PC of some kind. They come into work, perhaps they plug into a wall outlet, and that's it. They're not too aware of what's behind or what's under the hood here. Um, that's really left up to the network administrator. Okay, so that is an enterprise network. Like I said, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So let's summarize what we went over. Soho network, it's small. Generally one to ten users. Again, that's a, that's a guideline. And the purpose of a Soho network is to provide internet access and access to local and remote resources. The enterprise network is large. 
many users, thousands, perhaps even tens of thousands, depending on the size of the company. There are also many resources on an enterprise network, many more than found on a Soho network. And finally, the purpose of an enterprise network is to enable communications amongst employees and to enable them to access resources, both local and remote resources. And there you have it. That is the tutorial on Soho and enterprise networks. Thanks for watching.